G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so Thursday evening here in Australia, obviously sort of Thursday morning over in the States. Markets are still kind of travelling sideways, uh, you know, a bit of indecision, but you know, moving up ever so slightly, but then we have retracements as well. And we'll get into that short and we'll get onto that shortly, I should say. But I found something interesting here. So on Coin Telegraph, the Australian Senate just voted to kill the ten thousand dollar cash ban bill. A controversial bill to ban the use of cash for transactions over $10,000 has been voted out by the Australian Senate. Now, I find that interesting because in Australia, uh, we have had record number of banks, uh, not banks, the whole thing, i.e. the entity, but branches closing down. And I think uh, we've also had record number of ATMs uh, being pulled out of service. Australia is... You know, very close to a cashless society already. So yeah, I was surprised that they banned that. So at the moment, they're still happy for cash to stay. And I do remember the government themselves saying that, saying that cash would be here for as long as people needed it. And you know, that's more targeted towards the the older generation who just you know, they don't understand you know, you know the digital side of things all that well. And and I can understand that. You know. Uh, you know, particularly the older generation who didn't really grow up with computers and things like that. It's all just too much for them. So I expected cash to stay, but you know, the $10,000, I couldn't imagine there's too many people that are paying for something with, you know, $10,000 in cash. I'm not saying there wouldn't be any. I just, yeah, I am surprised that there would still, you know, be too many people carrying around $10,000 worth of cash. So I found that interesting. But anyway, you know, cash is here to stay for a while, uh, at least a little longer. And look, it still is king worldwide at the moment anyway. I don't think that'll last for too much longer, but all right, fair enough. Cash is hanging around for a little bit longer in Australia. All right, this this one really intrigues me. So we've all been talking about, you know, oh, we were waiting for ETH 2.0 to finally happen. And it kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. And so people got ecstatic and I was one of them that ETH 2.0 has finally rolled out. But then it was, you know, like, oh, the rest of uh, ETH 2.0 won't be ready until the end of 2022 or something like that. Maybe that's not the case. Joseph Lubin says insiders are very optimistic about how fast ETH 2, uh, ETH 2 will unfold. Joseph Lubin believes ETH 2's development will move quicker than many are expecting, predicting, predicting the new protocol will absorb Ethereum in the not too distant future. Speaking during the uh, speaking during the Ethereum in the in the Enterprise Asia Pacific 2020 conference on December 3rd, Consensus founder and Ethereum contributor Joseph Lubin Lubin predicted that ETH2 will devour Ethereum in the not too distant future. People in the know around the ecosystem are very optimistic about how fast things could unfold as the really complicated work has been done in launching phase zero or phase O, he said. While ETH2 rollout was believed to be occurring in strictly regimented phases, Lubin emphasized that the other aspects of ETH2's rollout are proceeding in parallel, meaning upgrades to the protocol may come much sooner than many onlookers are expecting. So that's really, really bullish news. Uh, I think that's really going to, you know, do wonders for Ethereum. The quicker ETH2 can roll out, the better full stop. It's good that we have, you know, the side chains and all the rest of it that are coming, layer two solutions. Uh, you know, we need to bring those ETH gas prices down and we will have a look at them before. You know, earlier in the year, ETH gas prices were 200, 300. That was just, it was unbelievable. It was absolutely ridiculous. It was super slow or it cost you a ton to you know, do transactions. And ETH 2.0 fixes that, not just ETH 2.0 alone. Obviously the layer two solutions, we really, really need them, but that's great that ETH 2.0 is gonna come quicker. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Because for ETH to really do well, it needs ETH 2.0 to be rolled out and the layer two solutions you know, to really be up and firing. So, you know, this is great. I'm, I'm a massive uh, fan of Ethereum. Uh, I'm an Ethereum bull. I think it's going to do extremely well. I do think it is the future of uh, sort of finance uh, on the internet. I'm not saying there can't be anyone else in there, but everyone is linking to Ethereum. You know, XRP has got their Spark linking to Ethereum. 
Cardano's linking to Ethereum, Polkadot's linking to Ethereum, you name it. Everyone is linking to Ethereum, and there's a reason. They are the big, you know, they got the first mover advantage. Uh, and, you know, so much development. And it's only going to grow and extend with ETH 2.0. Now people won't have that, you know, kind of bugbear of it's too slow, it, you know, costs too much. That is almost gone uh, and almost non existent. Now, look, we've still got a ways to go for ETH 2.0 to, you know, be true, tried, and tested. But I think things are looking absolutely fantastic for Ethereum. And I can't wait to see what it's going to, to do in the future. And I'm super glad that I uh, invested heavily into it. I mean, I invested heavily into cryptocurrencies uh, full stop. Uh, and, you know, time will tell if I've made the right decision. I believe I have. And really, that's all that counts. It's not about what other people say and think. It's about what you believe and what you think. And I think I've made, you know, what I hope will be a life-changing uh, decision. Now... Visa, again, they're just constantly in the news with cryptocurrencies at the moment. They've now partnered, partnered with Ethereum. Uh, well, they're using Ethereum, but more so they've partnered with uh, USDC, so the Circle uh, Network. Uh, this is, you know, Visa, although they're slow to the party for anyone who, you know, has been around in the crypto space for a while, they are going to go down as one of the big first movers for the actual um, you know transaction you know financial sort of space of it they are going to be right up there you know don't get me wrong uh, square cash app they were ahead of visa but visa is bigger and visa is you know they're a behemoth you know they will simply if there's someone that looks like they're going to take over from them they'll just buy them out that's that's what big you know businesses like this do and i'm not saying there's anyone that's going to take them out it's because visa's already bought them out but they have such a massive audience. I mean, here it is, 60 million merchants around the world. Now that's 60 million different businesses. That's not 60 million people use Visa. That's 60 million different merchants use Visa. And now USDC is connected to that. Uh, again, more massive news, particularly for Ethereum. You know, they need those layer two solutions. Uh, you know, it's not just ETH 2.0. Uh, USDC, I'm pretty sure it was on Algorand. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's also on the Stellar network. Uh, there was someone else. Uh, was it maybe Matic, I think? Uh, USDC is on there as well. So, yeah, this space is going to go bananas. I can just see it. Feel it in my bones. <laughs> feel it, feel it, yeah, just all over and again not financial advice just my personal opinion i'm not a financial advisor all right i wanted to go back and have a look at some trades i made a while ago to see how they're doing and keep you updated because i'm i'm pretty happy with how they're going so i called ave back here i saw that it broke out and i was like all right it broke out even further uh and then it came back down uh and so it was a fake out this is what we call a fake out it jumps out and quickly pulls back down Jumped out again, and again, I got into it back over here to broken out of this trend line, but hadn't quite broken out here. Faked out, you know, you get a little bit worried, a little bit scared. Jumps up and again, you think, sweet, things are fine, I've got nothing to worry about. Rolls over again, and looks like it's another sort of fake out. But then, pops back up, and we finally sort of retest it and get that support, and now we're starting to move upwards. Don't get me wrong, this can still roll over and it could go lower, that's absolutely possible. But at the moment, things are looking pretty good. And this is against Bitcoin. So it's not against the dollar, it's, you know, Aave's been moving up uh, in dollar value, but Bitcoin, you know, outperforms it for a minute and then it outperforms Bitcoin and they're kind of just, you know, chopping and changing and ranging sideways. But I'm pretty happy uh, with that call that I made on Aave, so stoked with that. Synthetics Network, confirmed. Breakout, it's not a fake out. Well, I mean, this could close, maybe down here, but it looks like it's confirmed the breakout. But that doesn't mean it's going to the moon automatically. It just means it's broken this, uh, you know, short downturn trend, you know, since September. So we've had a couple of months of it losing against Bitcoin. Uh, and, you know, it's also lost against the dollar a little bit. But now we can see that it touched it, fell down. Again, a bit of a fake out fell down and you know was 
this red line down here was really being used as support, you know, maybe even a little bit higher. And now we've broken out of it. Now we just need to wait and see what synthetics next move is. Is it going to do, you know, something like this where it just really starts to pump and rise? Or is it going to, you know, again, maybe roll over and, you know, fall below this or do a bit of sideways traveling, a bit similar to Aave. Uh, and look, these DeFi players, at least the ones I'm showing you right now, they're all doing something a little bit similar. Let's go to Ren. I talked about Ren just yesterday and I was worried. I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's fallen below. And what have we got here? Sorry, I'll just move this. That's the way I want to do it. All right, so we can see it was rolling along this white line and testing this uh, trend line. And it even sort of, it had a fake out, but to the downside. So it pulled down and now it's punched I won't say punched up, but it's gone just above this red uh, red line here. So it's just hanging in there. And Ren, again, this is just, you know, this is what we call getting coiled up super tight. And now we're just waiting to see, is this going to roll over? And again, maybe come back down and test something like this or test something down here. This is against Bitcoin. Or is it going to make a move like this where it just rockets up and does something, you know, truly remarkable? It's getting very close here again. You know, we can extend these lines out a little bit, but I'd say sometime by, you know, it's December 3rd now, sometime by the end of the December, end of the December, end of December, we should know. So before the new year, we should know whether this has broken out finally to the upside or has it simply broken out to the downside. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still confident that I've made the right call with Ren. Uh, again, in, in the dollar terms, uh, it's gone up. So I haven't lost anything in the dollar, really. I haven't made a whole lot, but I haven't lost anything. But against Bitcoin, it's just Bitcoin would have been the better buy. But we're waiting to see if this now has a massive breakout. All right. Bitcoin itself. Let's have a look. How's the granddaddy going? Again, we set new all-time high. It fell down. Uh, you know, sort of, you know, it's traveling sideways a little bit, but we're just flirting with this kind of, you know, $19,600 level, waiting to see what happens. We still could roll over. It is possible. We need to have that in the back of our mind at all times. Not, you know, the worst case scenario, we're always constantly focusing on it. But if this were to roll over and drop down and test, you know, 16,000, God forbid, God forbid, you know, test 13,900, 14,000. Are we ready for that? Are we prepared? Do we have uh, a stop loss so we can sell if that starts to happen? Or do we have some cash sitting on the side for should it get down to these levels, we're just buying that dip. You know, that saying buy the dip, it is oh so true in a bull market. And we are in a bull market, ladies and gentlemen. 100% guaranteed, no doubt about it. But if you don't buy the dip, you can't take advantage of the dip and you need to understand that the dip might go further. Like let's say, you know, this is today and it falls down to here and you buy, you think, right here, I've got it a little bit lower than what it uh, started at the other day and then it falls down to here. You know, and again, it even wicked out down to here. The name of the game is to don't panic. The name of the game is to hold in a bull market. Buy the dips, hold your coins, unless you're a trader. And if you are, congratulations. Uh, I don't really trade. I do a couple of swing trades here and there. Uh, but really, I'm just more an investor than anything. And if you hold, so again, you bought here, you thought you got a great deal. All of a sudden, it's down here. You're panicking. So this was the 26th of November. So you basically had to wait 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th four days and you're good you're back in the green again we're saying we bought around about here a couple of days later it wicks down but now it's just moving higher that is the name of the game particularly if you're an investor know when it's a bull market know when it's a bear market i.e know when to sell and know when to buy and through a bull market really if you're in good projects buy early hold buy the dips when you feel it's getting near to the top Work out how much you're willing to sell, whether you're going to do it all in one big hit at a certain price or scale out over uh, certain prices. And then you invest that money in whatever you want and, you know, wait for the next uh, sort of bottoming of the market. Because there will be another bear market. How low it will go, how long it will last, nobody knows. And look, nobody knows how high this one's going to go either. 
All right, lucky last, let's get over. 582 billion. We've got to refresh this. It's been here for a while. 584 billion. All right, so in a matter of maybe sort of, you know, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, it's gone up a couple of billion. Gas prices, so sitting around 33, that's a bit steep, but again, ETH 2.0, lots of people are moving ETH at the moment and starting to stake it, so the gas prices are going to get a bit higher, and hence why we need that uh, 2.0 stuff to happen as soon as possible. BTC just sitting around 61%. I'm really not sure if we'll ever see like a 75% uh, Bitcoin dominance again. We could, and I thought we might, but we kind of hit that target where I expected it to go, which was 65%, and it was only there very briefly. And then it's just come back and set around really 61, six, excuse me, 62%. Once Bitcoin truly breaks 20,000, uh, and you know, it's not fluctuating up and down and no fake outs and that, this could start to rise again really quickly. People could be like, radio, it's on, it's happening, you know, further, you know, regulation and not over regulation, just, you know, further regulation and policies set around it. This could definitely jump up into the 75% again. I'm just not sure it ever will, but it's something we keep in mind. All right, any big movers for 24 hours? Hell yeah. Anyone who was in Elrond's doing pretty well and i wish i was in elrond but anyway i'm not you can't be in everything i have heard good things about elrond and i might have to do a bit of a deep dive into it uh and then look at it because it sounds quite promising decred as well pumping compound terror we got some really good double digit movers and then look a lot of just sort of high single digit movers hedera hashgraph thank goodness uh i've put some money into that <laughs> it has been one of my worst performers but you know you just hold and it's making its way back. VeChain, all right, there's a number of things. Ren, as I said, uh, has been doing all right. I'm happy with that. What about losers? There's going to be some losers. We just got to hope that there's no really bad losers. And there we go. We're not. Sushi, of course it was going to pull back. It's had a crazy pump. So well done. But look, you know, they're being bought up by Yearn Finance. So uh, yeah, basically Sushi will sort of be no more. Uh, it'll just be Yearn Finance. Well, it may keep the name, but it'll be part of the Yearn Finance thing. Status, not too bad. Synthetics Network, you know, pulled back a little bit. That's not too bad. It's still up 7% over the seven days. Uh, and as I said, it still just only broke out against Bitcoin. We've got, to, we've got to wait and see whether it goes on a pump. Stellar continues to come down. Uh, not too much, nothing too crazy. And again, it had a crazy pump, 140% in like seven days. So, you know... I'm waiting. I sold some Stellar and I sold it nearly at the top. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just waiting. I sold it around about sort of 20 cents uh, Stellar US and I'm waiting to see how low it uh, goes and I'm going to buy back in uh, and try to buy more, you know. A bit of a swing trade, like I said, and, you know, maybe I get lucky, maybe I don't. I mean, I could buy back in now, and technically I'd be doing all right, but I'm just waiting to see if it'll go a little bit lower. But, yeah, very minor losses there. All right. That's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. Hit the like button below and the subscribe button. And I'll see you next time.